Airships were once believed to be the future of human flight. And that shouldn't be a surprise. The first airship took flight in 1852, 51 years before the Wright brothers successfully flew their first airplane. Even with budding competition from airplanes, airships remained the preferred form of air travel up until the early 1940s. But of course, the airship lost out to the airplane. And that's because in comparison, the airship was a design disaster. Tragedy strikes. A terrific explosion in the tail fin of the dirigible, and passengers and crew hurl themselves out of the ship into the ground. Navy and Army men risk their lives. The birth of the airship is rooted in the popularity of ballooning culture during the 1800s. Even Benjamin Franklin believed hot air balloons to be a discovery of great importance and one which may possibly give a new turn to human affairs. These early balloons were essentially what we now refer to as hot air balloons, which used heated air to take off. At the time, it was a huge aeronautical advancement. However, these balloons were at the mercy of the winds, which often led to disaster, as depicted in this newspaper painting of a Savannah, Georgia balloon rescue. So French engineer Henry Gifford decided to make some key adjustments. First, he changed the shape of the balloon from circular to cigar-shaped. Next, for more control of the direction of the aircraft, he added a steam rudder and propeller. And on September 24th, 1852, the first non-rigid dirigible took flight. It traveled nearly 17 miles from the Paris race course to Ellencourt near Trapp. While he was able to make turns, his aircraft did not have enough power to fly back against the strong winds that day. And there was another problem with Gifford's design. Like hot air balloons at the time, it was made entirely of fabric. If air escaped, the balloon would collapse. Inventors began to experiment with semi-rigid and rigid dirigibles. Inventors like David Schwartz of Hungary. He believed metal was the answer. So he set out to build an all aluminum rigid airship. In 1897, after two failed attempts, Schwartz was ready to test what he believed would be the future of flight. Unfortunately, Schwartz died that year at the age of 44, never seeing his airship take flight. It was his wife, Melanie, who finally organized the maiden flight of David Schwartz's airship. It successfully achieved takeoff in a tethered test near Berlin, rising over 1,600 feet, but collapsed as it landed. Again, the airship proved just too fragile to be a realistic mode of air travel. Among the spectators of this first airship flight was Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin, and he felt he had the solution. 30 years earlier, the Count was on a trip to the U.S. as an observer of the Civil War. He was awed by the Union Army reconnaissance, balloons he saw rising high above the battlefields. This launched him into a lifelong obsession with air travel. By the time he saw Schwartz's balloon lift off in Berlin, the Count had already sketched up his version of the airship. And the next year, it was under construction. Zeppelin's version had some similarities to Schwartz's design, but had some key advantages. First, it was absolutely massive. His first airship, the LZ-1, as it was called, measured nearly 420 feet in length, longer than a football field. This size allowed the airship to carry heavier, more powerful equipment. Next, it was filled with 17 individual airbags instead of one large air cavity in previous designs. This created a safety net of sorts if the external shell were to be punctured. The LZ-1 took its maiden flight on July 2nd, 1900. The flight lasted about 18 minutes and covered about three and a half miles over Lake Constance in Germany. But Zeppelin and his team kept building upon previous designs. By World War I, the Zeppelin company had built 21 airships, each one larger than the last. In January 1915, Germany employed three Zeppelins, the L-3, L-4, and L-6 in a two-day bombing mission against Britain, successfully dropping their bombs on English coastal towns. Four people were killed. By the end of the war, a total of 84 Zeppelins were built and 51 raids had been carried out on England alone, killing 557 people. The demand for Zeppelins as a war machine allowed the technology to improve greatly. By the end of the war, Zeppelins like the R-Class were over 600 feet long and could reach speeds of 64 miles per hour. Airships were about to enter their golden age. Countries like the US and UK had airship fever. 
and in 1919, the British airship R-34 became the first to cross the Atlantic, landing in Mineola, Long Island, New York, after a 108-hour-long flight. Airships were undoubtedly the future of air travel. One reason why airships were far more popular than, than little putt-putt airplanes in the early days was because they were, they were much larger, obviously, and they were much more comfortable. If you went up in an airplane, I'm talking a, I'm talking a 1920s passenger plane. First, the decibel level was louder than the New York subway. So if you want to subject that to, your, to yourself for, for three hours or something, that's up to you. Um, it was definitely, it rattled. Something like 80% of people threw up during any flight on an air, a passenger airplane at that time in the 1920s, early 30s. Um, they were subject to enormous turbulence. They could have 100 foot drops at any moment. Whereas with an airship, they could fit up to 50 people and you had, uh, you know, you had your own bedroom, you had your own well, stateroom, you had your own dining room, you had a, a lounge, you had beautiful uh, promenades. I mean, you had a huge amount of space to walk around. It was essentially like being on a cruise liner in the air, as opposed to this little juddering, shuddering uh, airplane, <laughs> airplane. But throughout this period of success, airships were also showing their flaws. On September 9th, 1913, a German Zeppelin traveling above the North Sea flew into a severe thunderstorm. Strong winds and cold rain caused its gas to contract. The airship split in two and plummeted into the water below. 13 of its 20 passengers drowned. And on May 6th, 1937, the most infamous Zeppelin accident occurred. The LZ-129 Hindenburg was the largest airship ever built. It was 778 feet long. It could carry almost 5 million cubic feet of hydrogen. 10 Maybach engines powered five separate engine cars. It could carry 56 crew and 50 passengers. The Hindenburg took its first flight in 1936 and went on to make 17 round trips between Germany and the United States that year. A one-way fare between Germany and the United States was $400, equivalent to $7,370 in 2019. The Hindenburg had the world in awe. But on May 6, 1937, disaster struck. Just enough to keep it from... It burst into flames. Get it started. Get it started. It's right and it's rising. It's rising. Terrible. Oh, my. Get out of the way, please. It's burning and bursting into flames and, and it's falling on the morning fast. And all the folks between that this is terrible. This is the worst of the worst catastrophes in the world. It took only 34 seconds for flames to completely envelop the Hindenburg. A total of 36 people lost their lives. In a cost-saving decision, airships of the time, like the Hindenburg, chose hydrogen over helium. Helium is not flammable. Hydrogen is highly flammable. Hydrogen air mixtures can ignite with very low energy input, one-tenth of the heat required for igniting a gasoline air mixture. There have been numerous airship disasters prior, some with larger death tolls, but the horrific scene captured by photographers was ingrained into the eyes of the public. Many blame this moment as the cause for the death of the airship. But there were other issues that made the airship an unrealistic option for mass commercial travel. First, they were very, very expensive to build. And you could build, uh, you know, 500 or 1,000 airplanes for the price of one giant Zeppelin. Airplane engineers were able to experiment more and faster for cheaper. While airships stole the headlines, the airplane was gaining ground in almost all categories, most notably speed. Now, airships were no laggards. I mean, these things were, the, the Hindenburg, for instance, could go uh, in, in a good wind, 80 or 90 miles an hour, which was, at the time, counted as fairly fast. But airplanes went faster. At those speeds, it would take two and a half to three days to fly from Germany to New York. Just two years after the Hindenburg crashed, Pan American inaugurated the world's first transatlantic passenger service on June 28th, 1939 between New York and Marseille, France. The flight carried 22 passengers and took 22 hours to reach Marseille, with stops at Horta, the Azores, and Lisbon. This flight proved once and for all that airplanes would be the future of commercial flight. Planes were finally cheaper, faster, and overall more efficient than the airship. The airship has since slipped into our collective memory. They are beautiful objects. They are these spectacular, um, queens of the air, 
that once sort of strode the, the world skies and have since, since vanished. The only places we can glimpse remnants of these air giants today are the blimps flying overhead at sporting events. But recently, rumors have been growing. We might have a use for them yet. Enter the cargo airship. Researchers with the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis in Austria recently explored the idea. In their scenario, airships would rely on the jet stream to carry them and their cargo to their destination. Lockheed Martin has been exploring this idea for the last 20 years. When you've got a big job, large equipment, people to support, and no roads to get there, there's only one solution. The safe, simple, and sustainable answer, the Lockheed Martin Hybrid Airship. Their hybrid airship would be hypothetically used to carry heavy cargo to remote destinations. Airships like these could also be used to deliver humanitarian aid to hard to reach places that have been hit by natural disasters. The government of Quebec committed 23 million US dollars to the development of an airship company called Flying Whales. Flying Whales' LCA 60T model will be able to carry up to 60 metric tons of goods, traveling up to 62 miles per hour in order to serve remote areas. Commercial production is set to begin in 2025. And the final goal is to make over 162 LCA 60Ts in the first decade of production. But what about passenger flight? Well, airships are still slow, so they will likely never be chosen over airplanes for long distance travel. However, there is opportunity in the tourism industry. The Ocean Sky Cruise Company is moving forward with plans to send a passenger airship to the Arctic. When completed, the Ocean Sky airship will be 320 feet long and will carry 23 crew and passengers. It's expected to make its inaugural trip in 2023. However, a cabin for two will set you back $65,000. So no, the airship is unlikely to realistically ever compete with the airplane for commercial passenger travel. But engineers and entrepreneurs are realizing its potential for other services. In some ways, these early 1900s futuristic depictions may have gotten it right. Airships could very well be a more common sight floating above our heads. But we don't expect the Empire State Building Spire to actually ever be used for its rumored purpose. Thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on airships? Let us know in the comments below and be sure and hit the bell in the corner so you'll be notified whenever we publish new videos.